Daggerheart Character Creation. Ironically, the final topic in this series, walking through my alpha playtest experience with the game's lead designer, but conveniently, one of the first topics we're likely to see in their open beta playtest, officially coming out on March 12th. So be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on Daggerheart's development for as long as I find it fun. Because I'm Bob, this is where we learn how to have more fun playing RPGs together, and the first major step of Daggerheart character creation is to choose a class. Little weird, right? I think most of us are used to the chronological steps of character creation, ancestry, background, and then class. But for this playtest, Daggerheart used class-specific character sheets, so at least as a new player, you kinda need to choose your class first so you can get your character sheet and then go through the other steps. There were eight class options, and in a second, you'll see how these options are uniquely organized. We had the Rogue, Sorcerer, Druid, Ranger, Warrior, Guardian, Seraph, and Bard. But each of these eight classes were also assigned two out of eight qualities called domains. The Rogue had Grace and Midnight. The Sorcerer had Midnight and Chaos. The Druid had Chaos and Sage, etc., etc., around this class circle for Bone, Blade, Valor, and Splendor. Now I love seeing this kind of clean organization in game design, but it can sometimes make a game so rigid that it becomes brittle, as in harder to homebrew or make any kind of adjustments without ripple effects. For example, you can see how this pairing of class and domains doesn't intuitively leave any room for new unique classes unless you started jumping across the circle to combine stuff, I guess. But that's getting way ahead of ourselves and all speculation. The plus side of this organized pairing is that each of your class's two domains offer you a few character features for sort of building out your own subclass in the later steps. Similarly, step two, choose your foundation. Every class had two foundation options, and like I just said, this is basically another piece of how you build your own subclass in Daggerheart. So we are quickly layering on a lot of potential character customization options, and that continues in step three, your heritage. And this is actually two steps, your ancestry, which is like your species or your race, and I already made a whole video about all those options because I fortunately managed to get a photo of all the ancestry character cards from my playtest. Go check out the frog guy, everybody loves him. But the second part of your character's heritage is their community, which is the environment you grew up in. And hey, if you ever felt like you couldn't find the right map or artwork to depict a specific environment in your game, look no further than this video's awesome sponsor, Chepeku. And like seriously, hear me out. Chepeku is offering a library of more than 4,000 RPG maps for only $5. What? Yeah, yes! They got traditional fantasy locations, they got more steampunky industrial locations, and they have tons of specific locations for basically anything you can think of because they've been producing these maps for years as one of the biggest RPG Patreons ever. JPEKU has new maps coming out every week, they work on every major virtual tabletop, and you can use them for any RPG you want, including Daggerheart. So check out their Patreon through the link below. But first, we're gonna recap those first three major steps by walking through my character. Step one, I chose the warrior character class because being a fighter type is a nice simple way to get into a system. It's described by the domains Blade and Bone, and it came with two starting moves, Battle Strategist and Combat Training. And if you want, you can pause the video here to read what all these features did, but I'm not gonna cover the specifics right now. Next, technically during a later step, I got to choose from several optional domain features. I went with two Blade Domain abilities, Whirlwind and Not Good Enough, which sounds way more self-deprecating than I realized. Step two, I chose the Warrior Foundation Call of the Slayer, every class having their own two options to choose from. And then step three, I chose the Fawn Ancestry and Ridgeborn Community, meaning I'm from a mountainous environment, and I also flavored my fawn to be more goat-like than deer-like, so I could be a mountain goat, mountain man. Now step four of Daggerheart character creation was to generate stats, and we used a standard array, two, one, one, zero, zero, minus one, spread however we chose over agility, strength, finesse, instinct, presence, and knowledge. 
Notably, a few months prior, at the very first Daggerheart playtest, players got four points to spread out and then had a minus one from any one stat. So they had the same total, but it was a more flexible method of distribution, which was objectively better for us min-maxers out there. So it'll be interesting to see which generation methods are presented in the upcoming playtest material. But step five, setting HP and hope, was very straightforward because your character sheet tells you exactly what to fill in for HP, and I believe everyone started with two points of hope. And I've covered HP thresholds and hope in previous Daggerheart videos, so check those out if you'd like a refresher. Step six and seven, choose weapon and armor. Behold, the actual Daggerheart weapon list from my playtest session, which is a pretty cool piece of game design memorabilia, but each weapon is detailed with a specific character stat that it relies on, its range for combat, the dice you roll for damage, how many hand emojis are required to hold it, and any special features. But you'll notice that the operative weapon stats are not limited to just strength and agility. There's also finesse, presence, and even instinct-based weapons. And the magic weapons mostly rely on instinct, presence, and knowledge, which is very cool. Then, of course, we have some options for secondary weapons and starting armor, and as much as I'm really into analyzing the pros and cons of different weapons and armor in RPGs, we're not going to hyper-focus on those details, knowing that they might have already changed. Step 8, starting inventory, is also spelled out on your class-specific character sheet, telling you a few items that you can take automatically, a few items that you choose from, and this is also a great time to point out that each sheet gave a brief description of the class, as well as suggested stats, ancestries, weapons, and armor for your class. So even though we're like eight steps deep into building a relatively complex RPG character, and there's a lot of new terms flying around, I think Daggerheart does a pretty great job of guiding new players through filling out this character sheet and using it at least compared to other big fantasy RPGs with highly customizable characters. And that becomes incredibly clear with these last couple steps, where we are given a handful of prompts on our class-specific character sheet, and these prompts are flavorful, theatrical, and dare I say, Mercerian? Look at these character descriptions. Patched, sparring clothes, eyes like an endless ocean, a body that's rotund and broad, the color of clover with an attitude like a bull. <laughs> Can't you just hear Matt reading those words? And the questions are even better. For the warrior's background and connections, who taught you to fight and why did they stay behind when you left home? Somebody defeated you in battle years ago and left you to die. Who was it and why did it feel like such a betrayal? What legendary place have you always wanted to visit and why is it so special? Then asking others in your party, how did we know each other long before this party came together? What mundane thing off the battlefield do you usually help me with? And what fear am I helping you to overcome? So for me, it is these questions that makes Daggerheart feel critical role. They're not just dramatic, they're about strong bonds between your character, the other characters, and the wider world that you build together with your game master, ultimately shaping a meaningful, fantastical role-playing game experience for the people at your table. And that's about as critical role as it gets. But let me know what you think down in the comments. What are you hoping to see in the upcoming playtest materials and videos about them? And if you appreciate this coverage, be sure to give this video a like, maybe subscribe, or join Patreon like these awesome people who directly support what I do. And as a total side note, keep your ears open. Because next month, I'm going to be officially announcing my first Kickstarter, and I can't wait to tell you about it. So thank you for your support, and keep building.